Hi everyone, uh, welcome to part four of homework one, the fourth and final part, unless I do the challenge bonus, which I probably won't because I, I just got really behind on this one, honestly, but I might give it a stab, I might take a stab at it, give it a stab, that's not really a word, or really a saying, but uh, this is part four, so I already vectorized the part, the function from part three in the last video, so I kind of got a little bit ahead on that bit. But I still need to generate a plot of the surface of the helical pipe. Um, but I already have all the points for it, so it should be pretty straightforward to do so. So once again, let's take a look. We ended off with this surface vector. Um, and this is actually an array of uh, these dimensions. And uh, I need to somehow go through all these, through all 100 values of t for every 16 points around every 100 values of t for each x, y, and z coordinate. That's what uh, this sort of shape means. So I'm going to go ahead and define, uh, maybe I'll call it surf array, and I'll go ahead and define uh, that as surface array. And of course, I don't, I want the actual array, I don't want the shape. And, uh, oh, okay, so I, I need to make that a variable, not just uh, two distinct things. And I'll go ahead and uh, start to sort of parse this thing out a little bit, right? So I'm going to say that x, y, and z is equal to um, the transpose of the surface array. So surf um, array dot t and if i go ahead and run that it should run successfully yeah so the reason why i'm doing this maybe i should actually uh take uh the show you what the transpose looks like well i'll do the shape of the transpose array see the problem with uh the way this uh vector comes in normally is is exactly what what this is solved the first three values are the x y and z uh coordinates of each one so I can go ahead and define this transpose of the surface array uh, by like parsing it up into x, y, and z. And parsing is the right word, I know, but I'm not super programming savvy, so, so some words I just I'm not really smart enough to figure out. So if I were to maybe look at x, now x is a it's a it's a two dimensional array uh, with a bunch of values of x uh, at a certain um, list of one, two. Uh, it should be like 16 by 100, I think. Or, well, let me look at the shape. So the shape of X is 16 by 100. So that's saying uh, for every 16 points around the circle, uh, it has 16 points around the circle, and each uh, set of points around the circle has 100 uh, T values. So let's go ahead and start plotting this, right? I'll go ahead and create a new cell if I can, new code cell. And I will go ahead and maybe just go back up here uh, to where it all started. And uh, I'll look up here, and I will, oh, I already had it copied. Uh, it's kind of cheating, I guess, but uh, I didn't mean to. Um, yeah, I will go ahead and copy that. Uh, so we're making a figure, and we're going to add an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-figure, uh, z-coordinate to the figure. Um, now, of course, I want to go through this incrementally and do this, so I'm going to create a for loop. So for i in uh we will have to say we'll have to go through we'll go through the values of theta first and uh plot a bunch of lines that are all sort of uh parallel to this line essentially so i will go ahead and say for i in uh a range defined by the uh theta's uh size yeah size i was thinking what should I do size or shape but i want to do size so I'll take the size of theta, so however many uh, units of theta there are, and for each size of theta, I will go through and uh, append figure, or add this scatter to figure. So I'm going to add the x, the y, and the z coordinates. But you see, x and y and z are two-dimensional arrays, so I actually need to just tell them what value within the array should I take. So I'll say for x, I want to take every value of i, um, uh, for all, or, no, so every value of, no, okay, so this should be, oh, it should it be what? So I think I want to tell it to take every value of t, uh, for all values of theta. So I think this is correct. I might have the colon and the i reversed if I'm misremembering it. But if I go ahead and run this, uh, and then run it so that it is displaying figure at the end, uh, yeah, sure enough, it does what I want it to do. So this is generating a bunch of lines that are all sort of perpendicular to that original line. This is all fine and good, but I want a bunch of little circles going around here, too. That's almost sort of what we've been envisioning this whole time. So I'll go ahead and, oh, first off, I should probably uh, maybe set the line color equal to uh, black. 
and uh, get that done. And sure enough, there's a bunch of black lines surrounding it. Uh, that's pretty awesome, right? Uh, looks pretty cool. But uh, now they're all the same colors. So that's cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. If I go ahead and copy this and uh, run it incorrectly uh, and cut, paste it over here, now I want to go through uh, for the length of theta or of t, so the time function, and then I'm just going to flip this i and this colon. So if I do colon and then uh, for every value of, so for all values of t uh, at uh, certain values of theta, I want to go through here and um, uh, if I can copy paste it correctly, I want to plot each circle. So now when I go ahead and do this, I will get, hey, look at this, very exciting, right? So this is sort of the final plot I was going for. You can see it sort of snakes around. Um, and yeah, uh, this is you know sort of what we're asked to do, right? Vectorize the function, generate a plot of the surface of the helical pipe that follows the helical curve defined above. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, I, I don't know how to best say it. You uh, start with uh, this line and uh, just added a bunch of uh, yeah, points around it and generated it into a plot. I guess to go through a little bit more specifically, uh, I started out by um, creating this line uh, using a function called uh, curve. And then I went through and um, I'll skip the gradient part. Uh, fit, use the Jacobian and the gradient uh, of that line in order to calculate a plane using the Frenet-Serre formulas to calculate a plane perpendicular to this line. And then I uh, plotted the perimeter around it at a certain set of points with a radius of uh, 0 0.5. So uh, yeah, with all that in mind, this is the final plot. It looks pretty cool, and uh, I certainly enjoyed doing this homework. I hope you enjoyed watching me, and I definitely hope you learned something. So this has been Ben. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Uh,